America and all your ships at sea. Your old pal Stevie Coyle here. I need a little more light, I think. Something like that, maybe. Yeah, yeah, something like that. How are you? Welcome to the Friday Noontime webcast from Mighty Fine Guitars in Lafayette, California. I have a very special guitar to show for, to you today, boys and girls. <laughs> Mr. Rogers. It's a 1966 Rickenbacker 12 string. And I'll wait just a minute just to make sure that things are up and rolling here. The usual pause in the proceedings here to see if things are actually happening in the way they ought to. And it seems like we have a chance here. Yeah, looks like things are happening. Good, good, good. All right, here it is. This is a time machine guitar. One owner, the fellow that owns this guitar, bought it himself in 1966, or maybe his parents bought it for him. It wasn't as expensive as it is today, back then, for sure. Oh, that's right, it's electric. I'm an acoustic shop here primarily, so this is a little ways outside my wheelhouse, as they say. But... I couldn't resist when the fellow said, you know, could you help me sell this guitar? I bet I could. So here we are. Sounds just like it ought to. It's not in exactly perfect shape. It has one little blush on the other side of the fingerboard over here. Everything's original. The pots have been replaced, but we have the original pots. Everything else is completely original. This is, <laughs> there's so much contention about this, but it's really fun to kind of go after it and see what people think. The opening chord to It's a Hard Day's Night. I hear that. It's been a smokes. Makes me want to turn, turn, turn. Let me see who's here. Hi, 15 people. Feel free to sign in and say hello. Uh, Eric Apgar is there. I'm in the room where it happens. <laughs> yes, that's true. It's a fact. Hi there. Yeah, I know. So many stars. Help me out here. Oh, we lost a little signal there for a second. What the? I think we're back. Who else played one of these things? George Harrison, clearly. Roger McGuinn, clearly. Uh, Paul Kantner, sure. Apparently, Yarma Kalkinen and Signave together two on stage at, at one time or in the studio. But see, me being an acoustic guy, I'm not totally savvy to this, so please kick in any knowledge you have about the mid-60s, 360. This is, got, this is the 360-12. Now, of course, these are strung. In fact, I don't know if you can see. I'll try sticking the thing up in the camera. Can you see that the, the pairs of strings are backwards? from what they would normally be. Usually on a 12 string, you'd have the skinny string, the skinny one of the pair, the octave string, or the two octave string, up towards the bass side of the pair of strings. But in this case, you've got the bass string on the bass side. And I think what that did, if I'm not mistaken, what I feel, and this is totally one guy's opinion, is it makes it easier to finger. The fingerboard is very narrow, one and five eighths sort of across there, pretty narrow, especially for a 12 string. But the fact that you've got the fat string sitting up higher makes fingering the, the, the chords a lot easier to me. I wonder if that's why they did it. There's got to be some Rickenbacker experts here. Why did they do it that way? Everybody strings it that way, backwards from what a normal or usual 12-string stringing would be. Is that because it's easier to reach what you need 
over there in the left hand. And here, while you're talking about that, take a look at this thing. This feels like that scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. When, when this guitar came in and I opened up the case, I felt like that guy. I felt like my face was going to melt. It's beautiful! You know, the, the light came up from it and the angels sang. It was an astonishing moment. This thing is just fantastic. It's in great shape. There's, like I say, there's one little blush on the fingerboard right here. But that's it. As for the rest, no substantial dings, no, uh, no nothing nowhere. I've looked around. The, uh, the binding is all in great shape. Low mileage is the only thing I can attribute the quality and uh, condition of this guitar to is low mileage. So there's plenty of notes left in there for you to play. The asking on this, now this is at the high end of the range because it's at the high end, it's, it's at the high end of the price range because it's at the high end of Rickenbackers from the mid 60s range. The gentleman is asking $7,000 at the moment. Looking on Reverb and some of those places, they are guitars that have sold for considerably more. So since this is brand new on the market, and since it's in primo condition, it's, uh, the asking is towards the high end of the, of the scale there, fingerboard takes some getting used to but once you're there I bet you're gonna be great us finger style guys tend to like one and three quarters across the nut and this is less than one and eleven sixteenths this is more like one and five eighths take a little getting used to for sure let me look at your comments and questions let me put this down very carefully notice today I wore my softest clothing to, to play this guitar just because it's so doggone pretty. Holy smokes. Let me see, see if there are any comments or questions that need addressing. Hi, John Wittenberg. Hi, John Bradbury. Hi, y'all. Feel free to pass this on. You know, you can share this. If you know a 12-string player, a Rickenback fan, somebody you think might be interested in this guitar, feel free to share it with them either in Messenger, Facebook Messenger, or just pop it up on your page or send it over to them. I'd sure appreciate it. Uh, I'd love to get this guitar, and so would the fella who owns the guitar. I would love to get it in the hands of somebody who's going to play it. This fella says, you know what? I just haven't played it in a lot of years, and uh, somebody should be. And as you, that's a typical profile here at Mighty Fine Guitars. People bring in guitars because they're not playing them for whatever reason. I don't know what they've got at home that they are playing. Often smaller guitars, truth be told, and acoustic guitars, because you can kind of grab those sit up, park yourself on the couch, and play while you're watching sports or uh, Netflix, you know? That's, that's why. So somebody could make really good use of this guitar. Oh, it's, I wish I could keep it myself, but that's not gonna happen. No, no. Hi, hey, Clint. Go Cowboys. Hi there, Michael Propson. Let me see who else, who all else is here. Yeah, Townsend, right. Julie Fleece Owens, hello. It's pretty heavy. You ask how heavy it is? It's pretty heavy. It's not a light guitar. You wouldn't want to stand up with this for any length of time. I don't think. I wouldn't. But I'm accustomed to super lightweight acoustic guitars. I'm just not in shape for this sort of thing. You know, I'm sure that somewhere online, uh, the specs on how much it actually weighs are available. I couldn't tell you just by kind of guesstimating. I really couldn't. 
Hey, Jerry Cross. Andrew Rubin, very good. Hey, Susan Brown. <laughs> Hi, Rhino. Nice to see you again. Hey, Rick Starbuck. There you go. Chimey Deliciousness. That was my stripper name for a long time. But uh, I, you must have heard of it. But uh, it, that does accurately describe this guitar as well. Guy Zoller. Tom Petty, you bet. Tune, tune, tune. Uh, Twelve string is Italian for cannot be tuned. Or is that mandolin? One or the other. Hey, Julian Fisher. Mike Nepper. Jeff Strickler. Dan Payne. Oh, I'm going to give it a try. Marinko Baljack. Did I do that right? I know there's some wonderful tuners called Baljack tuners. I hope I pronounced even that correctly. Eric Apgarp, Chris Plumstead, standing by to drool. <laughs> oh, somebody come, come buy this guitar and play it and take it and love it. After 1966, all these years, what is that? Is that really 56 years? It is. One owner, and he's kept it in spectacular condition. The case is in equally spectacular condition. The whole thing when he brought it in, I thought that can't be the original case. What does this say about the guitar that's gonna be appearing momentarily inside? Sure enough, the case was a harbinger of the f d creamy deliciousness, what was that, Rick? Of the guitar's chimey deliciousness of the guitar. well and it's an easy play it's set up beautifully the setup is great you can play all the way up the neck it stays in tune even up here and it's easy to play up here wonderful setup folks. Hit me up. Any comments, questions? I'll take another look and see if there are any uh, questions that need answering. The guitar speaks for itself. Not a lot of questions, I don't imagine. Except, yes, the asking price is $7,000. It's at the top end of the scale price-wise because the guitar is absolutely at the top end of 60s era, Rickenbacker 12 string, 360s, fire glows. Which is what it is. Let's see here. And... Well, very good. We'll make it real short today. What do you show after that? Nothing. You sign off and let people ponder whether or not regret for not buying it would subsume any other emotion you might be feeling. As my grandmother from Vaudeville used to say, you know, things are expensive, but the most expensive thing of all is regret. Mm-hmm. Like that. So, down the road, folks. Uh, comments and questions, pop them in here. Do feel free to share this with anybody. I'm going to pop it up to Instagram as well and YouTube and all those places. And I don't imagine it's going to stick around long. Uh, so do come grab it. If you want it, come grab it because it's not going to stick around long. It's just that good. Down the road, everybody. Your old pal Stevie Coyle here, signing off from Mighty Fine Guitars in Lafayette, California. Do -do 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 -do.